ahead and hit the record button. So we're recording now. And that way, if somebody can't figure out the application or they can't get on, they can still have access to the seminar because I'm going to mail this out to everybody. So this is self healing with gemstones, which is the biggest um, benefit I think to working with them is just being able to use them on yourself and your family. So the first thing I'm going to go over is entrainment, which is how the gemstones work. Now in your email, you're going to get this um, little handout that I put together. So that's like an added benefit to the seminar. Um, so when you go to your email, you're going to be able to open this up and you can download it or you can print it out, but it's yours to keep. And it goes over the basic stuff that we're going over today. Um, and it gives links on the bottom to um, my YouTube channel and online stuff. So how do gemstones help us? Any ideas on that from the gallery? I I don't know. Uh, how do they How do they affect us? Like, do they do anything to us? Does this yeah. do anything to us? What do you think? They have energy, so they impart energy upon us. They everything has resonant energy. Every single thing. This paper. This gemstone, um, my couch, everything is resonating with energy. Even though you can't see it at the atomic level, this is in motion. It is not a solid object, even though it looks and feels solid. Um, so the resonant energy is constantly being put out by this object. Now, everything has a different quality, and that's why it's a different object. This is different than the laptop, than my hand, than the ring. Um, it all resonates different kinds of energy. So when this is putting off its energy, what we call that is an energy Taurus or an extension. It's almost like an aura of the object. Um, so the aura of this object or the Taurus of energy kind of extends about relative to the size of the object. So the larger the object, the larger the energy torus that's being put out. So in this case, just like Hibiscus Moon says, uh, size matters. <laughs> so a lot of people that work with gemstones will tell you that um, the size doesn't matter, but it really does in the energy torus that's put out by this gemstone. Now, it is our natural ability to adjust to our environment. So if I had a really good worker that was positive, that always came into work, that was always upbeat, if I put them down into a group of people that were really negative and always talked bad, eventually, and it would take a couple of months, but eventually that person would turn negative and start talking negatively. But what they've done is they've entrained to their environment or synchronized to the environment. It's a natural response that your body has to the environment around you. So if this comes into close proximity with you, it's your body's natural response to want to entrain to the energy that it is putting off. So it's kind of the recipient's responsibility to adjust their energy to the object. So the object doesn't really affect you directly, but you entrain to the qualities that are being put out by it when it comes into close proximity with you. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. 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 It's called entrainment. That's the name of it. Um, your body and your brain entrains to a lot of different things. And it is simply a state of synchronicity. Okay. Um, colors are the first thing that we're going to start with. The basic colors have 
different qualities or vibrations. And that's the first thing that we uh, note when we work with gemstones is we go by the color. Okay, where are we getting the colors from? Ideas. I tend to go with how the color makes me feel. Right, exactly. I colors come from the light spectrum. All entities are made from light, okay? Even negative ones are made from light. And that's why we use black gemstones to combat negative energies because black is the absence of light and it will actually absorb that light. So it absorbs that light energy from that negative entity. So that's why we use black specifically. If you shine a laser on something black, you're going to notice that the laser beam is absorbed by that absence of color. Oh, yeah, okay. So that's why um, we're using black gemstones in protective uh, situations um, because it absorbs that color or that light. So everything is made of this uh, energy of light, and the light consists of several different colors. Several different colors make up white, specifically red, yellow, green, and blue. Okay, now here's an interesting thing that um, I thought of not too long ago. If you look at the chakras that were written about 3,000 years ago, the chakras from bottom to top, if you just level it out horizontally, is identical to the light spectrum. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So um, how did they know that 3,000 years ago? That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So let's start with our colors. <clears throat> so since white contains all the colors, you would use, and let me show you, like, this would be an example of one of the things that you would use gemstone-wise for white. It contains all the colors. The uses are peace, purity, cleansing, sanctifying, and protection. So the color will tell you the basic use for this gemstone, okay? And remember, we were talking about black being a protective stone. This is a piece of jet, which is one of the most protective stones uh, that has ever been discovered. Um, 2,000 years ago, Tibetan monks used this uh, jet in their prayer beads specifically to combat demonic possessions. So... This is the, one of the best stones to use for removal of negativity. So black, which is the absence of color, uses our banishing negativity, um, reversing evil, grounding, and also mystery work, like if you were doing a spell or mystery work or something. Um, you can also use this for grounding, and that works with the lower chakras. So that's a good one. So now we're going to look at red okay this is a piece of red coral so the color red stands for charisma primal force power passion male influence and a kind of a dominating influence so let's say you were going into a situation where you needed to defend yourself or you needed extra charisma to influence people or you just were feeling weak, like weak in the blood area, you would use this to boost that energy. So that's what the red stones are mainly connected with. Like, the, like a presidential red tie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But on the red so tie. This is um, a yellow one. Let me show you one that is used more often than this. This is yellow jade, but... This is a piece of amber, and these are yellow. So what they put off or portray is sun, warmth, creativity, 
uh, regeneration of the life force and well-being. So this is important, like if you're having uh, some kind of surgery or procedure or you're releasing some kind of trauma, you will want to use this to regenerate the life force. These amber pieces are really good for headaches also if placed on the third eye chakra here uh, and done a meditation with that. But let's go on through the colors before we get too technical. Um, green. This is one of my favorite pieces. This is a piece um. of green calcite. But green is life-giving, prosperity, abundance. It has nature connections and restoration. So, and this one directly correlates to the heart chakra. So, this is a really good one to use, um, calcite. And then we're going to go on to the last color, which is blue. And blue relates to purity, royalty. It's a very cooling color. So, if you have an inflammatory reaction going on, this is a good one to use. True blue or truthfulness, this is a good uh, one to use for that. Sky or heaven, so it's a very spiritual psychic stone too. If you notice uh, when you read a lot of stuff about using gemstones um, and a psychic, increasing psychic abilities, most of them are using blue stones and it's because of the connotations of sky or heaven. And we relate the psychic abilities to that. So that's the first thing that you're going to go with is what do I need? Do I need that primal force? Do I need that power? Or am I needing regeneration and renewal of the life force? Is my life force weak? Um, if you want a general balancing, that would be white because the white is uh, consistent of all of the colors together. So first pick out the color association that you want to um, deal with what's going on at the current moment. Then you're going to choose a modality. And if you guys have a question about stuff, just jump in. I'm going to try to get through the basics of this so that you guys can ask questions about stuff. The modalities of use are so many. In your handout, I'm just using a basic, um, a basic one here, but there's so many more, like, for instance. Okay, let me just start with this. Uh, you guys, how are you using your gemstones right now? Uh, can I go ahead, Katie? Oh. Mm -hmm. I actually don't use them at all. I just kind of came to learn a little bit. Okay. Um, okay. Well, for instance, uh, last week when I had my PET scan, I took my, um, let me, I'll be right, hang on, two seconds. Okay. Let me grab it. I use it for protection. Uh, what kind of stones are you using for protection? Uh, all the little, all the black ones. <laughs> Okay, so onyx, hematite, obsidian, ter black tourmaline, are those ones? The tourmaline I have as a pennant. Okay, good, good. Uh, we're going to go over at the very end of this, grounding and cleansing, because a lot of people that use uh, <laughs> stones specifically for psychic protection don't know to ground those or cleanse them on a regular basis because those tend to fill up really, really fast. Okay, go ahead, Gina. Okay, so when I when I go for my scans, I you know normally I'm I'm laying there, you know, thirty to forty five minutes and, and things like that. And I do, um, I carry this. I found this at the beach um, a while ago, and I love it. I love the color. It's got a little white running through it. It's like a charcoal. It's not it's not black black. It's like a charcoal, but um, yeah. um, I just like it because it's the way that it fits in between my hands. It's kind of pointed at the end and it just fits perfectly right in my hand and I can lay back and relax. What I do is I just, I hold it and I, I try to breathe. I'm, I'm thinking clear air, like almost like white 
Mm -hmm. my nose and then I'm, I'm thinking this color when I breathe out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. I'm going through my scans and things like that, just trying to, um, you know, going from the top of my head to the bottom of my body, I concentrate on obviously my brain, you mm -hmm. know, remove some of that and just trying to breathe all of that out of my mouth, you know, just mentally. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of like a meditation thing along with this. It helps me focus on exactly what I'm trying to do. Right. Right, which is perfect because if I remember correctly, that particular stone has a green hue to it and a black hue to it. Yeah. So if you look at the colors, remember black is very grounding and soothing, and so it's going to bring that color representation to that process. Also, the green color is this life-giving or renewal. So that's going to work well with what you're doing also so that even like if you find just a stone out in the driveway if it resonates with what you need use it yes uh, yes yeah, I don't I that's exactly how I feel about you know we Robert's been picking up these stones and, and things like that and when I look at it it's not so much about the size of it or the shape of it or even so much the color of it it's just how it makes me feel Right, right. So if I found it down by the mailbox, that's fine. If I found it at the beach, if I found it, you know, something, but it's how it makes me feel. Exactly. Good point. That was something I was going to bring up. Hey, good job. Um, this is done through communication in the subconscious. Your subconscious is what I like to call the big picture. It filters the environment around you. It's connected to the universe. It's connected to spirits. Um, it's a resonant state of mind that is below the conscious mind. The conscious mind is what I like to call the little picture, okay? It's only concerned with what am I having for dinner, when do I need to wash clothes, you know, the here and now. The big picture is what we want. So the big picture, the subconscious filters everything. It pulls in in excess of 50,000 more bits of data per second than your conscious mind. So that's a lot of information that you can't see and you can't hear, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but we're not, uh, we're not taught this in school. You are filtering information that you can't see. Like while I'm sitting here, my subconscious is filtering the information from out in the street. I can't see it and I can't hear it, but it's still doing it, mm -hmm. okay? So one of the ways that your subconscious communicates with the conscious mind is by feeling. When it sends a gut feeling up to your conscious mind, that is direct communication telling you, hey, I've filtered this information about this stone and I feel that it will help you. So it can't tell your conscious mind, hey, you need to pick up the stone but it can send you a feeling that you need to do it. So remember that your feelings are always based on factual data that your subconscious has pulled in to analyze. Yeah. So never ever ignore your gut feelings on anything. Right. So let's talk about how we want to use these. So the first thing is sort of like when you were doing your treatment, it's sort of like a meditative type of thing. You're going to, now you hold the stone. The, so that's like a palm. Yeah. I have an example of a palm stone here. Palm stones you want to have relatively flat and smooth. So, and people will use these as a worry stone because you can um, take some of that anxious anxiety energy out by just kind of frictioning the stone with your hand like this. Yeah. So that removes a lot of anxiety. It can remove pain. You want to make sure that you ground these afterwards. And before we end the seminar, I'm going to go over how to ground and cleanse your stones. I'm very interested in that. So yeah, yeah. I'm very, because I, I do feel like I um, impart a lot of, um, you know, thickness and yeah, I feel like I fill it up like a cup and I want to 
like wash it. I don't know where to even begin with that. So that's the, yeah, I'm very interested in that. That's what we're going to go over. But um, some of the ways that we're going to use uh, the stones is, well, the first way that most people use these stones, and this is the perfect example of a stone that you would oh, use for that. Gorgeous. It, this is an agate, which is very grounding. So you would use this in massage. And it's smooth. It's perfect size to use for the hand, to use for massage. Now, uh, you're going, you could have a loved one do this for you, or you could do it for yourself. Like if I had strained this area right here, um, and I was feeling a little uh, disconnected by the pain, and I wanted to ground and remove pain because agates will absorb pain. Uh, you're just going to rub that right over, massage over the area. And agates. is that is that what it's it's that's the particular name of the stone? Yeah, this is an agate. agate. And if any of you are local and you want to get some really nice <clears throat> quality, good energy gemstones, um, I have a friend on Facebook. Her name is Barbara Bacon and her shop is called Crystal Crazy. This really large, huge, really beautiful agate I got from her shop for $15. And it's polished and smoothed. This, that's a phenomenal price for this type of specimen. Absolutely. It's gorgeous. So you would just hold that and work over the area or have your loved one work over the area while you're concentrating on uh, sending the pain from the area up into the stone. This will uh, remove that, but we would need to ground and cleanse this afterwards. It does not hurt the gemstone at all to absorb the pain uh, because they sense the universe different than we do. So to them, it's just excess energy. Yeah. Um, you can use the point, you can use flat surface, removing that pain and it would be like combing your aura to remove that from your aura yeah okay and you, using using um do you rec like would you recommend using any certain um homeopath you know some of the oils or you know in in addition to the stone yes, yes. um i use a bunch of different oils along with the stones you can use meditation oil um, you can use a um, piece of uh, oil for peace or for pain control. Uh, so you could put a couple of drops of the oil there and then work with the stone on top of that. So that's one of the adjuncts that you can use along with your gemstone. So specifically for the, um, the, the tumor that's on my left side, I would want to take um, a, a, a healing stone, which you said would be... That would be the green. Like yellow? You, uh, yellow is used for regeneration of life force, warmth, uh, and well-being. So you can either use yellow or green or a combination of both. Okay. And with, and like what type of, oil, just any sort of oil that makes me feel good or, or just. And that, another thing you can do is a, um rejuvenation oil and a pain control. So like a rejuvenation oil would be tangerine or lemon, and then you could use chamomile along with that to combine those two effects. Uh, the tangerine and lemon are gonna impart well-being and rejuvenation, and then the chamomile is gonna provide the pain control. And then your gemstone is going to absorb that excess pain that's radiated out from that area. What okay. Is, what about something like this, Catherine? That's perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. It's got a nice, rich green color to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, that's great. So the massage is the first thing that you can use with these gemstones. The next is like meditation. Uh, so, Gina, while you're getting your treatments, if you, um, let me grab a stone that would be used for that. Okay. Say, let's say I wanted a healing type of stone, one a green color, and this is a, a clearer jade, 
but it has the green color. I like these flat little pillows. They're called pillows because they sit flat on the skin. The most surface I, area, yeah. I feel like the energy has more surface area to absorb. Right. So anything green that you can get in a pillow or Robert the cabochon, the cabochons have the flat bottom that you can put over the area. So you would do your meditation and actually work with the stone on healing the areas in question inside. Okay. So meditation is, is a big part of it. If other chakras are involved, let's say you're having thyroid problems, you would put this over that area here. Or if you're having heart problems, this is the stone that I use on David, and I put it over this heart chakra to uh, strengthen and rejuvenate that particular area that he has right here. Yeah, that's pretty too. I love that. This, this I got from Crystal Crazy for $15 as well. And that's a huge chunk of green calcite. Now, calcite is very identifiable because it has a waxy. Yeah, it's shine, yeah. Yeah, but it's very smooth. It feels almost like wax. So it's a nice stone to use as a worry stone because it's slick and you can use it for removing that anxiety from your energy field. Yeah, I like the slick feel because it does feel like you're actually imparting things, at, you know, imparting all of that out of you and releasing it into right. the stone. So another way that um, we use crystals is you can also make a crystal grid. How many of you guys have ever made a crystal grid? I've never. I have. Yes. Tell me what you've made a crystal grid for. Prosperity. Okay. What kind of stones did you use? I use citrine and... Um, Peridot in my prosperity grid, but which ones did you use? I used the same. Oh, cool. So a crystal grid is a focus of intention. And the focus of intention is augmented through the use of these particular stones. So when we went over the green stones, that prosperity and abundance is associated with the color green. So to make a crystal grid and I have I have some videos on my YouTube um, if you guys aren't subscribed to my YouTube channel um, go and subscribe and watch the videos on how to do a crystal grid but a crystal grid is simply a pattern that you're going to put a central stone and then you're going to put other stones surrounding it and the other stones surrounding the central stone are going to be of the quality of the color that you want for the accomplishment of your intention. So let's say my intention was prosperity. The central stone, I feel, always needs to be uh, larger than the other stones because remember that energy Taurus is what we're working with. And I like to use... Um, I like to use quartz crystal for the central stone. It doesn't have to be a perfect specimen. As you can see, this one was kind of chopped up by um, whatever was around it, but it's really nice specimen. So you would put that in the middle, and on your pattern, you would put other stones surrounding it for prosperity, which are citrines, because cit citrine is that warm, creative, regenerating force, and then the um the green of the other stones which i used peridot uh is that prosperity and abundance so those stones go around the central stone and then you go through a pot process of using like a wand or a point and connecting the central stone to the surrounding stones with energy and it's all for the purpose of whatever your intent is. So when you take your central stone, you, you would do like 
um, an intent prayer for this central stone to bring prosperity and abundance into the household. We replace that stone in the middle of that crystal grid and then connect those peridot and those citrines to this main stone with a point or a wand and that activates the crystal grid and it helps put out that intention to the universe to bring back what you're wanting to see happen. Okay. <clears throat> so for you guys, for healing, you can do a crystal grid for healing and let me tell you real quick how to do it. So Jeannie, you would take a picture of yourself when you're perfectly healthy, like, I don't know, 10 years ago when no problems, I mean like when you're perfectly healthy, put it in the middle of the grid, put, and you're going to put your intent, both of you into the central stone for healing and rejuvenation, okay? So you would want um, these regenerating life force stones, which are the yellow, so amber is perfect, citrine is perfect, anything yellow, okay? okay. You could use yellow, uh, yellow, calcite even even or orange calcite oh i love orange okay orange calcite would be perfect also remember life force this primal charismatic influence is a red stone so you could also like boost your crystal grid with some carnelian and this is a a piece of carnelian right here that's really pretty Oh, that is that orangey red. Yeah, that is. Yeah, it and looks like super thick, like bees, like bee, um, honey. It's like yes, yes. You yeah. could use a honey calcite. You can use carnelian. Um, you can use orange calcite. Just anything orangey, yellowy kind of color. And um, if you don't have a point, you can. I can give you a point that I have from a long time ago to activate your grid with. So the crystal grid is one that you can use for just about anything. Um, you can use it for, you know, house, home, intention on prosperity, for job, for health, for someone else's health. So you would just put a picture of that other person that you want to do work on or healing for under that central stone and like I said I've got a couple of videos on how to do a crystal grid on my YouTube account uh, so just go and watch those and that will help you learn how to set your grid up a little bit better okay on to other uses and this is a big one for me so I'm going to bring it up before we run out of time is uh, gemstone elixir. Gem, gemstone elixir, and this is this is one Gina you need to do. Okay. Uh, I know this is a lot of stuff, and everything I show you is going to be backwards. But you need to get a book. This is a little book. This is one of the best ones it's called Gem Water, and it's by Michael Ginger. G I E N G E R. And it goes over all of the different combinations of gem elixirs, um, gem waters that you can mix up. This is a, a extremely beneficial way to use your gemstones. A lot of the gemstones are not, um, you, you can't use them for water or elixir because they are toxic. So this will tell you which ones are safe and which ones are not. Um, I personally put an amethyst in my drinking water. I can tell you that is uh, one that is totally safe. <clears throat> it actually changes the pH of your water from acidic to alkaline. Oh, um, okay. Well, and what is amethyst? Amethyst. And you can, can you see it in the bottom there? The I can, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That is a really good one. I always put it in my drinking water every day. Um, there are other gemstones that are beneficial, but they are toxic. I've 
discovered a way to use those. They have really expensive systems to use these other gemstones, but this is a cheaper way that I've figured out how to do it. This is a cold sake container that I got off of Amazon for $12. Now the closed systems normally cost about $100. So what this is, is normally you would put ice in this area and the sake goes on the outside and it cools it down. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to use that for an indirect gemstone elixir. So the energies go into the water because of the proximity of the gemstones to the water. Um, but you don't get the toxic effect of the gemstone. You just get the imprintation of the energy. Like this piece, for, for example, is called fluorite. And it is toxic if I put it in the water, but it has so many benefits. All I have to do, I was talking about the direct gemstone elixir. So did you get the technique about putting it in there? Yeah, okay. So that will say, if you wanna use gemstones that are considered toxic, this is a really handy, very much cheaper way to do it. So let's go on to the next thing. Okay, dream work is a big uh, thing about using gemstones. So you can put next to your bedside some gemstones that would be used for dream work. That would be specifically maybe a white gemstone because um, it's not only peace and purity and cleansing and sanctifying, um, but it's also protection. So when you are asleep at night, there's one of the, um, the most prevalent times that you're open to any kind of psychic attack. So that's a good one to use for um, dream work. Dream work is another way. Um, another thing about gemstone elixirs, you can put an elixir together for certain things uh, and use it as a room spray. So what you would do to use it as a room spray is get some of these little gemstone chips and put them into uh, a distilled water. You don't want undistilled, but a distilled water. <clears throat> and then be sure and shake that up. You can also add essential oils to that uh, to augment its energies and the gemstones will actually agitate the water and when you spray that in the air you're getting that energy from these as they've been kind of leached out into the liquid that's in the spray so all of these are just different chips you can get these pretty cheap off of ebay <clears throat> you can probably get a whole bag of them for about 14 dollars off of ebay and when I say a whole bag, I'm meaning about five pounds worth. So sometimes it's easier just to get a little bitty bottle for five dollars and then just pour them in. So that's one of the ways too. So we've gone over grid sprays, elixirs. Psychic protection is one of the biggest things that gym sons are used for. And we were talking about the black ones. Um, let me just show you some different ones here that I have. <clears throat> so can you tell the difference between the obsidian and the jet? No. <laughs> exactly. Except the weight. Um, the only difference between these is obsidian is very much heavier than the jet. So the jet is petrified wood. It's going to be lighter. So if you ever have a question about jet or obsidian, it's the lighter one jet is. <coughs> you can also use hematite, but hematite doesn't have uh, as, it's not as black, it's more metallic -y gray. So let's go over, let's see, the psychic protection. You can also use blue stones for psychic protection like kyanite. <laughs> Here's a piece of kyanite right here. <clears throat> Some stones never need cleansing. This is supposedly one of those. 
And um, what you would do is just use this on a pendant and it's going to absorb the negativity as it's coming towards you. I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice a little bit. <clears throat> but anyway, um, you can also do a meditation on the third eye with this piece of kyanite. You can also remove negativity that you've picked up during the day by using this as an auric comb and combing that energy off of your aura at the end of the day. Just like taking a bath. <coughs> can you hear me okay? Uh -huh. um, okay, let's go over. Can you use too many stones? What do you? How do you feel about that? I said yes earlier. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of why I wore all this. <laughs> yes, you can use too many stones. You want to get gemstones that are not in competition with each other. For example. Let's say I wanted to calm myself down, <clears throat> but carnelian is red, so it's life force, projection, confidence, power, and I'm using rose quartz, calming, soothing, gentle healing. Do these go together? No. <laughs> they are in competition with energy so they cancel each other out. So if you wear these together, you're not gonna get any benefit because they're canceling each other's energy out. <clears throat> so just make sure that you get stuff that doesn't compete together. I'm gonna use this. How about it? <laughs> <sighs> And the water tastes better with this in it, too. I don't know. It just does. So, yes, you can use too many. Um, what's a thing that you would like to use gemstones for? Like, what would be something physically that you would want to address? Um, a calming. <clears throat> but. Cal okay. So, things for calming, like I said, you would pick it out. Rose quartz. What else is calming? Is two other ones. <coughs> Amethyst, which is a purple, and blue, which is the kyanite. So all of these together, you could you could wear or use these together, and that they would augment each other. They would excel each other's energies. Okay. So those you could do. Um, let's see. You could also use some white stones together along with that. So those would be peaceful and calming as well. Okay. okay. Have you gone to your email to get your um, handout? I, I went, but I didn't see it. <clears throat> I'll try to, I'll uh, re-email it to you, and, because um, I really want you to have this, especially for these color associations. Let's see what else. Okay, grounding and cleansing. How are you going to ground and clean your stones? Because it's really, really important. They're not going to work as well if you don't keep them grounded. So what ways have you been grounding your stones or have you done it at all? <laughs> Don't have stones, just learning. <laughs> okay, so the basic way to ground and cleanse your stones is to simply get a bowl, something like this, <clears throat> and go to the yard and get some earth. Put that earth in the bottom of the bowl and place your stones on top of it. That's going to ground out the excess energy. These came out of the earth pure and without us doing anything to it, they were um, just fine with their energies. When we use them, we're imparting our energies into that. They're containing it. <clears throat> so it's earth that needs to be used. 
to drain that energy away. You're going to simply put your stones on top of that earth, let it ground out overnight, and they'll be fine the next day to use. Perfectly fine. Then you're going to put the earth back out into the yard, and um, it grounds those energies out into the yard, and that's fine too. But if you can't get out to the yard, like say you live in an apartment or whatever, you can get potting soil. You can use potting soil to do it. You can also use sanctified salt. Let me show you another way. Let's say you don't have earth. <clears throat> you don't want to get any potting soil. It's too messy. Simply sanctify some salt. And sanctifying salt, all you're doing is putting your intent into it. You're putting a prayer <clears throat> of energy into the salt, and then you're going to lay the stone on top of it. Now, some of the stones you can't use in contact with salt because they degrade, like selenite degrades. Kyanite will degrade on salt. So what I usually do for those is, do you know how you can buy those pink Himalayan salt to candle holders? Just buy a candle holder and put your stone down in the middle of it overnight. And that will cleanse it as well. <clears throat> this river stone is used for grounding. You can see the moisture that the salt has pulled through the stone. So this is a really nice stone used for grounding. You simply place your hand over it. And the electrical forces that come from your body, those ex excess electrical forces, get pulled through your hand and down to the salt and ground it out. So this is a great stone for massage therapists that need grounding. So river stone from, you know, one of those garden centers, that's all that that is, which is a great stone to use. Another thing is... Um, you can set this down. This is a chunk, a big chunk of pink Himalayan salt. So you can get one of these and lay a stone on top of it if you can't get a little candle holder. So those are all really, really good ways to uh, ground out your stones. Now, there are other ways on the Internet. They're kind of complex. <clears throat> you know, putting them in the moonlight for seven nights. And big extensive rituals I, you don't really need to do that just overnight on earth or salt that takes care of everything <clears throat> this also you can use for removal of negativity this ch big chunk of pink Himalayan salt because it is a crystal <laughs> and crystals hold energy they also transfer specific types of light and that's ultraviolet and infrared light so you can use, like, if you are, you know you're going to encounter negativity, get you a big chunk of this pink Himalayan salt and hang on to it. Put it down in your pocket. Mm. Now, questions. <coughs> this is the part where we go over questions. What kind of questions do you have about the content? Any questions? Uh, we lost our other participants when it went off, so just <laughs> I'm going to have to try to email them the rest of the content. But if you don't have any questions, let's see. Yeah, there's one other person, but she has her her um, mic muted. I, I, guess I have one question, and it's pretty simple I guess so like what makes gemstones so special that they have the you know what what's the deal <laughs> if that makes sense like I get the whole color thing with color psychology but why gemstone because they are crystals um, let me just give you an example of some information that I came across not too long ago let's say we have a group of cells Okay, we're dividing those cells into two different dishes. Now, 
we're just now discovering that cells communicate by light, specifically ultraviolet and infrared light. We know that these two groups of cells are communicating by light, so we're going to put a divider down in between these two. Let's say I put a divider of glass. Now, the cells in this case, I'm going to kill. Since they communicate by light, we're going to see if the glass will transfer that communication. So I kill these cells over here. These cells are unaffected because the glass is in between them. But let's say I put crystal, quartz crystal down there. I kill these cells. These die over here in the exact way that the first set died, but they're separate. So the only difference is glass and crystal. The crystal allows the ultraviolet light and the infrared light to be communicated to the second set of cells. Okay. The second set of cells, once it receives that basic communication, they die in the same manner because they elicit their own cell death. <clears throat> so we know that number one, quartz and crystals hold energy and communicate light. So isn't that interesting? That is interesting. <laughs> Thanks for explaining that. <laughs> it's this, like this is stuff that we've, we intuitively have known for centuries, but are just now <clears throat> seeing the scientific research being done to prove what we suspected and known. Thank you. <laughs> so they hold energy, they transfer energy, they communicate light. They're kind of modulators, if you will, of a lot of stuff. <clears throat> there may be things we don't know <laughs> that they do. <laughs> you know, we have yet to discover on that. Let's see, I believe that our time has come to pass. Yeah, we've, we've touched on everything. Um, I'm going to email you a... I'm going to make sure you get this, and I'm going to make sure that everybody that paid for the course, even though they didn't get on, gets a copy of this recording, because it still says it's recording. Hopefully that glitch um, will just be that on the recording. But I appreciate you coming and spending Saturday with me. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you.